Howdy! Jason from Millennium Games here and we're back with another board game review. This week we're going to have a look at Android Mainframe. It's a, from Fantasy Flight Games designed by uh, Jordi Jean and Giorgio Morales. It's a two to four player area control or as they call it cyber domination game. It is in the Android universe the likes of Netrunner etc. Um, it's play some pieces and try and lock your guys in to control some areas. The idea is what we'll do is we'll show you the gameplay so you can get an idea of it and then we'll go there from there. Okay, so here we have, let's uh, Android my phone and let's have a look inside the box and see what we've got. So, um, inside you have the rule book. In the rule book it's just, it's only a couple of pages, seven pages long or eight if you want to keep the back, which is just bits and pieces. Um, tells you how to play, how to set up, etc. And tells you the components. Then, what you notice is this does not come sleeved or bagged. This is something I do because I have to do it. Um, you have the genetic program suite deck, which is there. Um, I'm not going to count the cards because I can't remember how many is there. Then you have, we've backed them up, you have all the individual runner decks, which are, I think there's only five or six cards per runner. Then runner tokens, Ooh, runner tokens, runner tokens, runner tokens. Each one has a colour to represent what I've done is actually even try and get them close. You've got your decks, for example, that is the yellow guys, yellow guys. So you've got them, you've got the partition pegs, which are nice. They're really good quality, actually. I'll give them the juice. Fantasy Flight do do good quality in the things, even though the artwork's a bit meh. Um, as you go, they're plastic. And then underneath here, we have the trays. Now these are, I quite like these because they give the, the game that little extra enjoyment. Um, you stick these together and you set them up like so. And then when you're playing, these will slot in here nicely so they keep them nice and tight. So as you see, get a good shake. They're not going, well, yeah, it does move, but you should be shaking it. I mean, if it gets knocked, it's not too bad. Um, for purpose of uh, components, I think it's pretty decent. Um, as I say, the only thing I don't like is probably the artwork. But yeah, let's have a look at who plays. So here we have a setup. What I've done is I've pre-set up two players, but I'm just going to explain. In a normal game, you would determine how many players, and then you would shuffle up the generic stack deck, give it a good shuffle. Um, while doing that, you all then decide who's going to go first randomly. Um, and then each person takes a turn from first to last to pick a runner, and they get the runner deck. But I've pre-set up, so we're going to take these runners, this runner deck, and we're just going to chuck them aside there. You set up all the components, the, um, the partitions nearby, so you can get access to them. Then each person gets their eight, uh, I can't mind what they're called now, let's just cheat and have a look at the rule book. Eight access point tokens, and then you've got your runner deck which has five cards in it. You will take your five card runner deck, shuffle it up, and you will draw three cards. They are to keep secret at all times, put them to the side, we'll do the same with the green guy. What we'll do is oh, one, two, three, and we'll stick them there. Now, what I will note is on the back of each card, it has got a picture, which this I do like, actually, surprise enough, even though um, that side's pretty mech. Um, let's put that there. Then you do that, you set the run up, then you do the genetic program stack, which is one, two, three, and four, and that's that. So, I will explain how this all works. Um, basically, what you're trying to do is you're trying to take these nodes, and lock in, I'm going to do a short one here, uh, one, two, three, you create a closed section with your token in it, and then your token flips and you will score points, so that's one point. But for example, if you were to, I'm just going to put it here, if you control this area here, that would be one, two, three, four, but it has to be closed. Um, so that's how you earn points in the game. Uh, you will get to do one action per turn, so your actions are, as you choose, you can play one program from here, you can play one of the secret programs you have unique to your deck from your hand, um, or you can discard the top card of the deck uh, into the discard pile to basically take a access point token and put it on any empty node. The nodes are these little indents here like that. So let's show you a gameplay. So first person to go would be say, for example, the yellow player. He's gonna have a look. He's, oh, sorry, everyone gets to start with one node on the board. That's a, that's a point to make out. So everyone gets one node on the board. Um, you can be cheeky and start there, which really can mess up some people's plans, but you just do that there. Um, so, for example, let's have a look at these cards. He can, this card, uh, execute this program at the beginning of another runner's turn. So you choose a generic program from the program suite and execute it. So that's a, sort of like an interrupt. This one is execute the top program on any discard pile. So it could be either the discard pile of the main suite or the discard pile of the player's hand. And then this one is discard up to two generic programs from the suite then execute one program from the program suite. The reason it says that is because what you do is you discard two and you'll refresh and then you can choose one. So 
that's that's the hand options the other option is to activate one from the suite so let's put these back under here let's say he wants to activate this one replicate won't work because there's nothing on the board replicate works in the sense of if you had one on you can replicate you can just duplicate a partition right if you had this one so let's lock the best one show example so lock you go you have one two three but you don't have to do it this way right you can rotate it like this or sorry that way or you can rotate it uh, yeah we're getting confused here that way you can rotate it down the way like this oh this is really complicated but there you go you so it doesn't have to go that way and then once it's done it's discarded you refresh the stack pass to the next person um, what you can do is fetch allows you to take one and move it over like that and you basically so if for example you had someone like that they were over here and you play fetch you can steal this to seal that up and score some points so i've got a good one so that would be there then refresh uh, another one would be to this one this is a unique one so if for example you've got a suite like this and you play this what you do is you basically swap the location of any two access point tokens just like that and it can be really good if someone's got a big setup ready to roll and you can manage to play somehow play this and something else you swap them and then seal yourself in you score their points from them and um, let's have a look see what else there is in the deck you've got swap again you've got this one which is the shift from shift one token to any empty node just like this simple as you just shift around the board and um, we got the swap and i think that's really the basics of them replicate and then there's just different shapes almost tetris like feel to it and um, it's got a bit of strategy in that you have to obviously be aware of what your opponent's going to play next keep an eye on the stack and um, keep watching the discard pile um, but again the other thing is these cards in your hand are unique to your own runner and they will always be beneficial to you over your opponent so keep an eye on them at all times um, at the end of the game what happens is you'll have loads let's quickly just throw this together like this and then i'm just going to throw one more in in fact let's throw one more up here let's make it a bigger one quickly ah, fire load up the partition pew, pew. Yeah. Ah, get in there come on one two and then that one there and then that one there so at the end of the game you score when this the game ends when this deck runs out gone doesn't matter if you got them in hand when that deck's gone it's all run out um you then go okay she got a whoop flippity face Flippity face two and flippity face three, you go, okay, green has one, two, three, four. Yellow has one, simple as. So that's not so bad. If for any reason, take this over here, this is obviously not going to happen, but if the boards are bigger and they've got identical, they've got identical points, one, two, and then you would look at how many how many areas, so if like, um, how do I explain it? If, I'm just not going to put partitions down, so say you had one, two, three, and green had two, right? And basically, imagine they're different sizes. So imagine this is a... Okay, I'm going to put partitions down because whatever, that's what. And um, put two there and then one there, right? And we're just going to imagine these three are locked off individually as ones. So they've both got three points, but what you look at is who's got the most areas. So that would be then one, two, three over one, two areas. So then that would be a tiebreaker that way. The chances of it getting further than that are pretty unlikely. If you do, just call it a draw. I'm pretty sure there's a rule in the book otherwise, but if you get to that point in the game, you'll just be fed up anyway, so it's okay. Um, that's how to play, simple as. So that was Android Mainframe from Fantasy Flight Games. As you've seen, it's it's a bit bland looking, um, those cards, the artwork wasn't the best. It just seems like the artwork of the cards, someone's just throwing some colours together and hope for the best. I personally didn't like them, but you know, it might appeal to you. The game itself, it's has a bit of a dull look but it is enjoyable it's got a, a lot of that as you've seen the take that feel you know you can screw your opponent over by swapping yours and sealing them up um it's a nice it's got a lot of tactics in it and you're trying to constantly contemplate what's coming what's happening where you're going um and where to lay so that you obviously um basically beat your opponent um it's nice in that it's got the tiebreaker options where if someone obviously um if you're equal points you then go who's got the most areas etc um, and it's nice that you can, it's got replayability in the fact that you've got different factions, you've got the different decks, and in the, each deck you only get so many of those cards every game, so it's, again, you'll replay just to find that different um, experience. Other than that, I mean, the game is brilliant, it's a cheap game, it's only £20, I mean, what can you say, for £20 it's, a, it's worth it. Um, I enjoy it personally, I know others that don't, but I would recommend it, um, yeah, Android Mainframe, enjoy.